Now that we've established part one, we will establish part two. We first note that in general, distinct elements of our group G do not give rise to distinct inner automorphisms of, of G. So the natural question to then ask is, if X and Y are elements of our group G, when are their corresponding inner automorphisms equal? An answer can be found by considering that this property star here gives rise to a group homomorphism from G to its inner automorphisms, which is automatically subjective by the definition of the set of inner automorphisms. Then, under this map phi, cx equals cy if and only if 5x equals 5y. And that holds if and only if 5xy inverse is equal to the identity automorphism on, on G. This is just the identity map from G to itself. And this holds if and only if xy inverse is in the kernel of this homomorphism phi. Now, the question is, what is this kernel of phi? Well, for an answer, if x is in the kernel of phi, then that holds if and only if x inverse gx equals g for all elements g in our group g. But this statement holds if and only if gx equals xg for all elements g within our group g. Because what we've done here is we've applied x to both sides of this expression. And this holds if and only if x is in the centre of our group g, as we recall from the definition of the centre. So we have that the image of phi is the group of all inner automorphisms of g. We've just established that its kernel is the centre of g. So by the first isomorphism theorem for groups, we have that the quotient of G by its centre is isomorphic to the group of inner automorphisms of G. And as a nice little byproduct of this, we've actually established an alternative proof that the centre of a group G is a normal subgroup of G because we recall that if phi from G to H is a group homomorphism, then the kernel of phi is always a normal subgroup of G.